Here we are, a year from the day I decided to expand my online teaching platforms, make a profile on OutSchool, and the rest, well, it's history. Hey you guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am currently filming this video on the afternoon of June 4th, 2021, which means exactly one year ago on June 4th, 2020, I taught my first classes on OutSchool. As many of you know, I have recently applied and joined the OutSchool teaching community. After a month of it sitting in my inbox, I am finally going to finish my OutSchool application. Just finished my first full week of teaching classes on that platform. So today I wanted to sit down, cover the experience, the good, the bad, the schedules, the mistakes, and of course, the income. Yes, in this video, I will be sharing with you guys my exact income over the past 12 months. If you're also an OutSchool teacher, let me know down below in the comments how it's going for you. Are you just getting started? Are you celebrating a milestone? Or have you been here longer than 12 months? Let me know your thoughts and experiences, maybe some advice down below in the comments. Also, if you're new here, be sure to click that little red subscription button and the bell down below to be notified for each and every future video. Be sure to also give this video a huge thumbs up as it really does help out this channel and I always appreciate you guys. And you guys are always asking, so I wanted to let you know that everything I use in my online teaching classroom is listed down below in the description box. Everything from my webcam, my ring lights, microphones, everything is listed down below. So without any further ado, let's talk about the last 12 months on out school. Charlotte has chosen to join us, I think. Okay, do 20 circles. Oh, I have to pet you the entire time, huh? So June 4th, 2020, I listed my very first class and I was so nervous about how it would go. I actually listed it twice once in the morning and once in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time. I was lucky enough to have enrollment in both of those classes and it just kind of taught me how similar it was to my previous platforms of online teaching and how it was going to be different. I was honestly so incredibly nervous that day, but lucked out with some really awesome learners. She was only here till the food dropped. But like I said, I lucked out with some really great learners. I think I had that class aimed towards preteens and teenage kids just to kind of get an idea because when I taught with VIP Kid, I was teaching like level fours and up, so they were older kids, not the little ones. To be honest, I did outline a lot of my classes to look like VIP Kid classes in terms that they were all 25 minute classes. I did note that the first few months I worked on OutSchool, I did use only the one-time class option. So I would have to get a group of kids enrolled, teach them once and then have to get another group. I didn't keep like an ongoing subscription class where you keep the same group week after week. That came later. By the end of June and early July, I had expanded into doing ongoing classes. I could see which of my one-time classes were doing really well, so I made extensions of them. So that students that came in to take my one-time class, if they enjoyed it and wanted to take something again that wasn't the same material, but the same concepts we were learning, they could go enroll in my ongoing classes. That is essentially how I have been funneling students into my ongoing flex and multi-day classes. If they like my one time, just like with digital marketing, you funnel them in. It's not like some deceiving thing. You still have to provide the services and the classes that you have promised, but it's just a good practice. If they like you in one class, give them options to take other classes from you. And that did work really well. Actually, the first few months on OutSchool were my most lucrative. Thinking about it, it makes sense. It was right in the middle of the summer of the pandemic. Students were still home. They had been home for a very long time and we're looking for other activities to do. Looking at my stats page, my first two full months, so July and August, were my most lucrative months. I made $4,200 in July and $4,500 in August. And this was money I was not used to having. With VIP Kid, I'd be lucky if I made like $1,200 to maybe even $2,000 in a month if I was up really early working consistent hours. I was working less and doubling my salary each and every month. I was amazed. I was like, what's going on? Is this real? But I will again give you the full number I made in my first 12 months. Uh, summer also had me experiencing things like bad reviews, slight burnout as I was trying to figure out like what schedules worked for me. I was still waiting to see if I was going back to brick and mortar teaching in terms of were they having us do remote or going in. And you guys, if you've been here, you know that we did cart teaching as specialists. It was a magical time that I never want to relive. And of course my top mistake that I did make a video about last year, 
the day I signed in and taught the wrong out school class. Yes, I actually did that. But then fall hit and I had to learn how to balance out school with brick and mortar teaching. That's where VIP Kid was a little bit easier in terms of scheduling because I could schedule right before school, go to school, and then teach in the evenings if I wanted to. For out school, I mainly taught four, three to four classes after school, none on the weekends most of the time. There were a couple times I was experimenting, uh, meaning that I would go and research when people who taught similar classes to me were not teaching, and a lot of times it was the weekend. So I would go and experiment because I did see a decrease in learners in September and October. Clearly some kids were going back to school, getting back into remote or in-person learning. So I was experimenting with the schedules. If there was no competition to have a class, even if it was a one-time class meet on Sundays, I would go ahead and book one every once in a while just to explore it. It did keep my numbers up. My lowest month of income was in September. I made $958, and it was mainly because I had not offered many classes at all. I think one or two ongoing had just been started. I closed all my ongoing classes, and that was a huge mistake. I had seven or eight full-time classes from the summertime, and they were bringing in such great money, as you heard in my July and August numbers, and I just stopped all of them because I had to, because I couldn't teach a 12.30 class on a Wednesday anymore when I was in brick and mortar. So closing off all of my ongoing class income just took out all of my pay. Lesson learned and something I can tell you here, if you have a class that is selling out doing really well at all costs, if you can help it, do not close that class or don't close all seven of them at one time. And then of course, moving through the school year, I had Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, I was putting together my first set of camps. I had not done summer camp, well, until right now here in 2021, but I did get involved in winter camps and I had my first camp happen in the week between Christmas and New Year. I set up a five day, so it's a multi-day class, but a five day camp. I allowed 10 learners to be in it and two weeks before the class was expected to start, it completely sold out. And I don't know if that was just luck or maybe less teachers were teaching during the holiday season, but I was able to teach my very first camp to a sold out group of kids, which got me so excited for camps. I immediately jotted down a bunch of ideas and things I wanted to do for this summer camp season. A lot of them are happening now, but got into winter camps. Then we entered 2020. I got into a really good rhythm of teaching after school three days a week, four classes, three ongoing. One of them was a one-time class. And then when we decided we were not going to travel anywhere for spring break, I decided to fill my schedule there as well. I honestly just wanted to see how much money could I make in a one week period. And spring break turned out to be pretty good for that. And then my last notes before we get into numbers, over the first six months of 2021, I designed and offered my first flex classes. They've gone pretty well. I am still kind of learning, ebbing and flowing in that design of class schedule and structure, trying to figure out the best way to be available and engaging to students who do take classes in the flex option. Because over time, yes, I would like to offer more flex classes while I still love doing live classes with my learners. Whew. All in all, I can say the last 12 months have been just a melting pot of so many things. But when it comes to out school, I can honestly say this was the best thing to come into my life during a pandemic. It was something that I could do, I could think creatively, I could structure the classes, make them on my own, uh, decide how many kids could be in them, price them. It was my own way to be a creative educator when I was stuck in this office for like six to eight months of my life. If I could go back and give myself any piece of advice or if you're new and want a good piece of advice, I would say take your time, focus on quality of class over quantity of class offerings and don't compare to other people. Your learners will find you and if you do ongoing, they will want to stay with you, they'll want to learn with you and they will like the classroom environment that you and only you can provide. And now the moment that I'm sure you have all been waiting for, the income. Over the past 12 months, I have made a total of $37,503. Now keep in mind two things. One, that is money that I have earned after OutSchool takes their 30% cut, but I still do have to pay taxes on this. And that's something we can get into in an entirely different video. If you guys do wanna see an honest, 
tax discussion about online teaching or just working from home or for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section. We'll figure something out. Taxes are always an iffy subject with me because everyone's situation is so different. There is no one size fits all. So I can't make like a guide or a resource other than the advice of get an accountant. But yes, that is money that I have earned after out school took a 30%. But again, I do have to pay taxes on this. But even so, I did not expect to make an additional $37,000 plus this year at all. Did not expect this whatsoever. Like I said, my first few months were very, very lucrative. If I had stayed on that trajectory of making between like 45 and 5,000, obviously this number would be higher, but I have to factor in that I had to you know, work full time. And then I started doing things like working with referrals and teachers that wanted to get onto the platform. There is referral program if you want me to help you get onto the OutSchool platform. The teachers themselves do not pay me, but there is a payout that OutSchool gives referring teachers once that teacher is on the platform and making money. Again, more information and links are down below if you'd like to check that out. But you guys, that is my one year, one calendar year on OutSchool. It has been wonderful. I'm so excited to see what happens this year, especially now that we are here in the summertime. I know that camps are important. I am currently working on videos documenting my experience with 2021 summer out school camps, seeing what works well, what doesn't, so I can report back to you guys. Again, I am in Eastern Standard Time, so if you hear me talking about times that are good to give classes, uh, that's the time that I am referring to. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, let me know your thoughts on working with out school or just teaching online down below in the comment section. And once again, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell to be notified for all future videos on this channel. If you are watching this, I believe the day it is going live, I will be on my honeymoon, so leave me messages here or on my Instagram. Uh, I'll probably be on the beach somewhere or lost on an excursion. So guys, thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.